All right, welcome to lecture six, furthering the elements of analog audio and how do you break down sound. Sound, when you are analyzing it, really is broken down into three elements. Those elements are frequency, amplitude, and phase. Now, we are going to be predominantly talking about, in this video, frequency. So what is frequency? Frequency is the number of cycles that occur each second. This goes back to when I was talking about um, compression and rare refraction where you have the whoops, pardon me, where you have the compression going forwards of air molecules pressing into one another from the vibration of whatever the original source is and then you have the rare refraction of them coming back to where they came from that is called a cycle each time a set of, of air, air molecules push forward then go back each one of those is a cycle so frequency is the number of cycles that occur in each second and then pitch is how we perceive those frequencies. The faster the vibration, the faster the vibration, sorry, the higher the perceived pitch. That means the more cycles per second, the higher the sound. That's why, you know, if you look at a guitar string and you have a very long three foot one and you pluck it, it'll be one note. If you shorten that and you pluck it with the same amount of energy, that same amount of energy is going to make that string vibrate even quicker, which because it's vibrating more cycles per second back and forth on that guitar string, it's going to be perceived as a higher sounding pitch. Human hearing goes between 20, 20 hertz and 20,000 hertz. Now what is a hertz? A hertz is a unit of measure of frequency. Also stands for, also known as, cycles per second. So if something is 20 hertz, that means there are 20 cycles per second. If there are 20,000 hertz, that means there are 20,000 cycles per second. If you have something less than 20, we don't hear it. If you have something more than 20,000, we also don't hear it. And coincidentally, that 20,000, that actually goes down with age. If you are younger, if you are in your late teens, early 20s, or younger, you got a chance of hearing something in that 20,000 hertz range. If you're like me, I'm in my mid-40s, I actually cut off somewhere around 17,000 hertz. I can go a little bit higher than that depending on how loud it is. But 17,000 hertz, around about between 17,000 and 18,000 is about the highest perceived pitch I can hear. So the older you get, especially if you don't take care of your ears when you're young, it can get worse. Like as an example, my father-in-law, his hearing is really bad. He's probably somewhere around 15,000 hertz because he's a former race car driver and been around loud engines, didn't wear hearing protection, and so now he has a real hard time hearing because of that. This goes back to... When I talked earlier about not using earbuds, you want to protect your investment, protect your ears. You only have one set of ears on you. All right, kilohertz. Oops, let me go back. Sorry. Kilohertz is another way of... Hang on. Hitting the wrong buttons. Kilohertz is another way of describing hertz. It's just that K means thousand. So if we are talking 20,000 hertz, that would actually be 20 kilohertz. And it's very important you have that capital H, then lowercase h and z. Or in the case of hertz, you have the capital H, lowercase z. Those are important. But kilohertz, all that does is mean you can drop off three zeros. Okay? That's kilohertz. So things would be either measured in hertz or kilohertz. If it's kilohertz, that just means that you're abbreviating more or less that, that those three zeros off of it. So if something is 40 kilohertz, then that means it's actually 40 
thousand hertz. If something, which actually is well beyond the range of human hearing, if something is 10 kilohertz, that means it's 10 thousand, didn't fit in there, hertz. Let me write that in there again. That is 10 thousand hertz. So 10 kilohertz equals 10,000 hertz. Okay. All right. Taking this further. Going back to our diagram of how we diagram a wave. All right. We'll be looking at these diagrams quite a bit. Um, this is showing amplitude. We will talk about that in the next lecture. Right now we're talking about waves. One complete vibration from normal to high pressure and then to low pressure and back to the starting point is called one cycle. All right, so what's happening here is that follow my line, it's going up, up, up. Again, this, this right here, this line here, that's zero pressure. We're going from zero pressure up to our highest pressure back down again. So this is our compression. This right here is our compression. It's going back down again past our zero pressure point on the way down to our lowest point which is our rare refraction. And then going back, 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 back up to zero pressure. This entire unit we just did going up and down and back up again that is one cycle All right, that is one cycle obviously when sound goes it's going to do multiple cycles going down the way but from zero pressure up to maximum pressure back to zero pressure minimum pressure back up to zero again this is one cycle All right, it is one cycle is not this. One cycle is not that. One cycle is just up from zero pressure to maximum, back past zero to zero pressure, minimum pressure, back up to zero pressure again. This is one cycle. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. You might need to diagram one of these things someday. You might need to understand. If I ask what is one cycle, that is one cycle. The time it takes to complete one cycle from the peak of one wave to the next is called the period of the wave. One cycle is one period long. All right, so when you are trying to measure what we're trying to this is what we're trying to do here is measure the period of the wave. This is also sometimes called the wavelength. You see that up here, the wavelength. All right. So what we are trying to do is that for scientists, it's really difficult to actually measure how long. And it's, it, these things can be measured in inches, sometimes feet, um, sometimes many feet long. And um, when scientists are trying to measure the wavelength of something. They often need, it's easier to measure from peak to peak because this distance to this distance equals the same distance as from here to here. It's the same distance, but this is much easier to measure on a device called an oscilloscope where you actually can see and measure those distances. So if I was to ask you, hint, hint, nudge, nudge, what how do you identify the wavelength it is from peak to peak all right all right 
A cycle is one, as we said earlier, this is more or less a repeat of what we said. A cycle is one complete rise and fall of pressure in the air. And then again, this is a repeat from what we talked about before. There are two stages to a cycle. That's our compression, which is the same as the peak on our diagram, is the temporary squeezing together of vibrating molecules causing a high pressure area in a sound wave, followed by the rare refraction. This is the trough, the temporary pulling apart of vibrating molecules that occur after compression, causing a low pressure area in the sound wave. Looking at the diagram again, again, I'm sort of reiterating a lot of this because I really want you guys to understand this, is that when we are diagramming, again, this up here is our compression, our peak, followed by going through zero pressure to our rare refraction, the trough. It's called the trough. This is called the peak, going back up to zero pressure. If I was to say, identify the peak of a wave, you would be pointing at the topmost part. If I was to say identify the trough of the wave, you would identify the lowest part in that. And going back, our, a cycle again is going from zero pressure to maximum, to zero pressure, minimum pressure, back up to zero pressure. All right. These are important things to know. All right, covering this more. Now again, we're not going to be talking about amplitude here, so don't worry about that for now. Right now we're talking about the number of cycles completed in one second is called frequency. So if someone says, what's the frequency of this? It goes back to, we're talking about the hertz. You know, talking about the hertz or the kilohertz. All right. The faster the molecules vibrate, the higher the number of cycles. So this means the higher the frequency. Right here, this first one, actually not that one, this right here is going to be a very low pitch because we don't, on this diagram, we're not even seeing the second half of the cycle. So this is a very, very slow, not slow, but well, it's a slow moving wave, which means it's a very low sounding pitch. This one up here is gonna be a little bit higher because we're seeing more waves happening. And then this one down here is gonna be the higher pitch because it's we have more cycles per second happening per second. Pardon my cheesy voice. But it's, it's pretty much as simple as that. Then more cycles per second, the higher the pitch. The lower the cycles per second, the lower the pitch. All right. Frequency, as we said earlier, is measured in hertz. Frequency is measured in hertz. I know I'm saying this stuff over and over again, but these are important things for you, for you to understand. And then 1,000 hertz is called one kilohertz. It's abbreviated KHZ. You'll see these all over the place. And the reason why it's important to know these things is that if you're going to be working in audio, people are going to be talking about, well, what, what's the frequency? Because there are, as we'll look into later, sometimes you want to keep certain frequencies and get rid of other frequencies. And so you need to understand what pitch range you're looking at. If someone says, I want to get rid of some of those middle middle frequencies because they're messing something up, there are systems out there where you can literally isolate specific frequencies and pull those out. And you need to be able to talk about these frequencies and understand. And we'll cover a lot more about how they interact with each other as we go along. When a sound wave travels through the air, the physical distance from peak to peak is called the wavelength. We talked about this before. So going from peak to peak, that is the wavelength. Just reiterating this because it's important to know. 
Low pitch sounds have long wavelengths, maybe several feet or longer, while high pitch sounds have short wavelengths, sometimes an inch or less. And yeah, these things can be measured in inches or less. And as I said also, those low pitches can go really long between waves. Wavelength is calculated by taking the speed of sound and dividing it by the frequency. So you don't necessarily need to know that, but it's important to understand that's how you come up with the um, wavelength when they're measuring these things. The higher the frequency, the higher the perceived pitch of the sound. Again, we've been saying this. Now, the interesting thing about this is that we as human beings, when we hear a sound, we don't go, oh, that's 40 hertz, or oh, that's 400 hertz, or oh, that's 1200 hertz. No, we just listen to it and we perceive it as notes. Going back as you know, far back as written music came around, we, def we define these things as notes. We put them on scales. Now, as I described before, showed you before, this is the range of human hearing. 20,000 hertz, or 20 hertz, I'm sorry, 20 hertz to 20,000. Or also 20 kilohertz. This is just good old HZ. Now, how do we as human beings break this up? How have we done this over the years? The frequency spectrum is the fre frequencies humans can hear between 20, 000, 20 hertz and 20,000 hertz. This we have divided into octaves. Essentially, with octaves, you're doubling any frequency that we hear, and we have about, we hear about a 10 octave range. All right, so if you look at the scale, each of the octaves, we got 20, and then double 20 is 40, double 40, 80, double 80, 160, so on, so on, and so on, and so on, and so on, and so on, on up to the maximum the humans can hear. All right. Another way of looking at this is the lower range, that 20,000 to 40,000. That is considered our low base. Upper base, still a low sound, low sounding sounds. Our upper base is 80 hertz to 320 hertz. Low mid is 320 hertz to 2560 hertz. Upper mid 2560 to 5120. And then the treble, those, you know, those upper sopranos around 5,1200 hertz or 5,120 hertz to 20,000 hertz. Now, I don't know of anybody that could sing that high, but there could be. But definitely there are lots of sopranos in these upper ranges and very few humans can play notes that low now to be honest in the animal kingdom there are animals that can produce sounds lower than 20 hertz and there are animals that can hear and make sounds above 20,000 hertz but as humans this is the world that we live in we can't go lower than this we can't go higher than this all right and that's it for the for on this one and i'll talk to you in the next one about amplitude